here, there's a statue back there of a Mustang horse. It's completely made out of chrome bumper parts from cars. Folks, they unveiled that statue at our Super Bowl back in 1987. It was held in Pasadena, California, where the Rose Bowl Stadium is, the Denver Broncos versus the New York Giants. The Giants won the game. Just before the game started, they unveiled that statue for Denver, and Denver said it was bad luck. They lost the Super Bowl, and they blamed it on the statue. They said it because it's a Mustang, not a Bronco, and they had it removed. Robert Ripley was from Santa Rosa, California. He made his name for fame making comic strips for Life magazine. He was a cartoonist. He married into money, and he traveled around the world twice. Now, along his journeys, Robert Ripley would write about oddities that most Americans have never seen before, like the world's tallest man, animals with two heads, bizarre sporting events, stuff like that. Then he had a radio show. It did so well, it got syndicated. And that means everyone from California to New York knew who Robert Ripley was. Well, he decided to take a show on the road. He started going to carnivals and fairs throughout our nation, showing off all the oddities that he collected over the years. Now, that just increases popularity. The building we're at right now was once known as the Warden Castle. This is a real castle. It was built back in 1887 by the William Warden family. He was from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but he actually grew up in Philadelphia. William Warden worked in Ohio for a man named John D. Rockefeller, a company called Standard Oil. They made a fortune. That company is now Exxon Mobil, still running from today. William Warden, he was an executive of the company, a record keeper. And he built this as a winter retreat for his family. And it's a big place. That's because he had 15 children. Wow. Folks, he had nine girls. Oh. I'm gonna let that sink in for a moment. <laughs> nine girls. There was only one bathroom inside there. This became a hotel. This is where Robert Ripley stayed when he was visiting St. Augustine. He wanted to buy this. He wanted to make this his very first auditorium. Now, unfortunately, Robert Ripley passed away in 1949. One year later, the Ripley's Corporation purchased this property and built the very first Ripley's, believe it or not, right here in St. Augustine. This was his dream. He never got to see it. They used to film the television show, Ripley's, believe it or not, right there in front of those front doors, folks. That's where they filmed it. Jack Palance was the host, and then Dean Kane. Dean Kane was the host for many, many years. The television show just went back on the air. We finished filming our first season at our warehouse in Orlando. It's on every Sunday night, 9 o'clock on the Travel Channel. The new host is Bruce Campbell from the Evil Dead movies. And it's doing really, really well. Yes, that you please keep your arms and legs in the train at all times. Please don't stand unless we're at a complete stop. If you're wearing a hat, make sure your hat is good and secured. We lose hats all the time. On behalf of Ripley's Red Express Train Tours, folks, I'd like to officially welcome you to the Daytona. And we're located in St. John's County. Our population is 14,300 inside the city. My name is Jeff. Folks, I'm from Rochester, New York. That's up by Buffalo. I've been visiting St. Augustine for about 18 years now. I retired from the military about eight years ago. Had a house built here in St. Augustine. Thank you very much, appreciate that. Now my family, we were targeting the St. John's County School District. They have a fantastic school district here. Now with all that said, I'm just gonna jump right into our history. In the year 1513, a Spaniard by the name of Don Juan Ponce de Leon. Don, because he was the governor of San Juan, Puerto Rico. Juan Ponce, that was his name, and De Leon, he was from Leon, Spain. He was sent by the King of Spain on a mission to find two things. He was supposed to find the riches on an island called Bimini, that's in the Bahamas. And he was supposed to find the Fountain of Youth. Folks, Don Juan Ponce de Leon never made it to Bimini. He missed it completely. He landed in what is now known as Cape Canaveral, Florida. When he came ashore, he saw all the beautiful flowers on the coastline, and he named it. He named it La Florida, Land of Flowers. He continued charting his way down the Florida Keys all the way to Cuba. Now I'm going to skip ahead to the year 1565. 
I have oak trees and have Spanish moss hanging from them. Spanish moss comes from the pineapple family. When the wind blows, this entire street sways back and forth. When you drive through here at night, it's like driving through a tunnel. You're not allowed to park on this street ever. The police will come get you right away. He's four years old. <laughs> They have five cannonball fire, live musket fire. There's an archaeological dig, and they have a planetarium. They show you how the Spanish crossed the Atlantic Ocean using the stars. That's called celestial navigation. There's a big sign in here that says there's over 30 peacocks on the property. When I was in there, I didn't see any peacocks, so I asked somebody, where's the peacocks? They said, sir, you're looking in the wrong place. They're up in the trees. I had no idea peacocks were up in the trees. There's a billboard sign on our left of what they look like. When they close their tail feathers, they're like six feet long. Now they say that it's very good luck if you ever see a peacock. And the only time you ever do is that they want you to see them. They weigh about 12 pounds and they can fly very quickly, short distances only. They live between 12 and 22 years old. Come on, Mother Nature, show us a peacock. I am not seeing any. Normally there are all these trees right here on top of the roof of this house. You know, when peacocks travel together with their family, it's called a bed feed. When peacocks travel together in a pack, it's called a party. <laughs> Lived his entire life in the jail with the prisoners, and he had a big family too. You can take a tour of the jail, it's a wonderful tour, but I gotta warn you, you gotta behave yourselves when you're in there. Sheriff Joe Perry has deputies everywhere, and they will lock you up. You guys wanna hear about the old jail? Yeah. I felt bad that we didn't see a peacock. I got some brand new material I haven't told anybody yet. You guys want to hear it? Yeah. I'm going to test it out on you guys. Bear with me for a second. They kept all the male prisoners in one cell of about eight. All the female prisoners in one cell of about eight. Cells about the size of the carriage you're in right now. No glass, no electricity. Spiders have to wrestle with those plants, something you don't want to do. They can very easily go right through a human hand. We got burger buckets on our right. They have Hershey's ice cream, burgers, dogs, shakes, fries. On the left is an Irish pub called Anno Millie's. Straight ahead of us, that's Mojo's Barbecue, local favorite. Great place. Pet friendly. Everybody brings their pets there. The Star Wars characters, and now they have a Britney Spears. Oh, baby, baby. Oh, baby, baby. Oh, baby, baby. How oh, was I supposed to know something wasn't right here? All right, mothers, pay attention, mothers. You got to be very careful when you kiss on those love tree. This Neo. There's a raw oyster bar on our right and a massage parlor on our left. Every time I come through here, this reminds me of the trench. Happy Veterans Day, sir. Thank you for your service. Now I'm going to talk about a man that modernized St. Augustine, made it what it is today, Mr. Henry Fleichler. He was from Hopewell, New York. He ran away from home at age 14, right after eighth grade. Henry Fleichler had a lot of failed businesses as he was growing into a young adult. He partnership with a man named John D. Rockefeller. They started a company in Ohio called Standard Oil. They made a fortune. Henry Flagger came to St. Augustine under doctor's orders. He had a very sick first wife, Mary. The doctor said that the climate here would do her well. When they arrived, he fell in love with our city, and he dreamed of building a grand hotel here where the rich and the famous could come as a winter retreat, and he found the perfect place to build it. But he had a problem. There was a Methodist congregation that had a rundown church in the ideal spot. Henry Flagler made a deal with it. He said, I'll build you a brand new church if you're willing to relocate. And they agreed. He built the grace of the Methodist church for them. And he spared no expense. Handmade red Italian terracotta. Holy the doors are made out of cedar for 600 pounds each. It's one of the first buildings in St. Augustine yeah. made for a brand new invention. Poor concrete. Flagger had one stipulation. He said, no bell in the church bell tower, the steeple. I'll tell you why in just a moment.
When the local Baptist congregation realized how generous Henry Finder was, if you look back over your left shoulder, you get a magnificent view of that beautiful church. The hotel on the right, Friger's First, built back in 1888. When they built this, we had a Babe Ruth Charlie Chaplin. It cost $10,000 to stay at this hotel. It was only open January, February, and March. It was a winter retreat only. Henry Flagger's right in front. Notice, folks, he's got his right hand in his right pocket, holding the very first dollar bill he ever made. And if you look at Flagger's eyes, his eyes are dragging to the bank right across the street. That's Henry Flagler. This is what the Alhambra Palace in Spain looks like. It's an exact replica of the right wing. It was built back in 1883 by a hardware salesman from Boston, Massachusetts, Franklin Smith. It's the first building in St. Augustine made out of poured concrete. They used railroad ties to hold it all together. He built it as a winter retreat for his family. And this was here five years before anything else was around. Still called the Bill of Zareta, but now it's a museum. You can find precious arts from all over the world inside here. The floor tiles themselves, they're from Spain, over 300 years old. Well, there's a collection inside here of Key West, building Palm Beach in Miami along the way. Now it's got a way to get you here. It's got a great place for you to stay. Needs something for you to do for fun. He builds a baseball stadium. It was just west of us. It's not there anymore. The Ponce de Leon Giants, all the workers in the hotels. That was the teams. Every night, everybody went to the baseball games. Well, he visits the French Riviera. He decides he wants to do that here in St. Augustine, so he builds the El Cazar Hotel. And he had entertainment on his brain when he built this. We'll come back to it. It's now called the Leitner Museum. The Leitner family, they travel around the world and they buy collections of collect war, the North Korean War and the Vietnam War. This was our center trade plaza, folks. They had weights and scales and measures. The, the fishermen, they would offload their catch at the marina across the street and they put it over here for trade. Also, we held our public executions every Sunday, whatever right after the Mass. Oh, the Batman! Hand the bear, coconut water, Batman! On the right hand side, we are approaching the Cathedral Basilica, the first congregation of Spanish for Catholic, right above the front doors of the statue of St. Augustine. Now, this is a Basilica Minor because the Pope has never given a sermon inside here. If he ever does, it'll become a Basilica Major. This is not its original location. It used to be across the street. The pirates burn it to the ground twice, so they moved it. That's where St. George Street happens out into the plaza. How you doing there? Hello there. Hand to bear coconut water, Batman. <laughs> On the right-hand side is the governor's house, where the governor of Florida lived and worked right up until we established our state capital. In uh, 1824, they put the Tallahassee. Still see cannibal fire musket fire in old Bokina water. Which? They tie your hands together, tie your feet together, and throw you in the well. If you sank and you perished, you were not a witch. This is called Evely Street. It is named after Evely, Spain. It is the very first street in America. This is the oldest one ever. Also on the left-hand side with all that green paint, that's the original jail, Sheriff Joe Perry, before they moved up north. On the right-hand side, the Sergey Kirby Smith.